So you want to bet me a see if I can get it running today? Ah, uh, it'd be pretty quick. How long has it been in here? More than two hours? Something like that. Good morning and welcome to Coffee Walk. This edition we're going to call, there's no coffee. So hold on a second, I'm going to make some. Colin, did you drink the last cup? Somebody did. You know what my dad used to always tell me? You can drink my beer, but never drink the last one. Now, again, we're calling this segment, What's in the Trailer? Has some fantastic leads. And these two, I really, really wanted to go film. We weren't able to, we'll blame it on COVID. So we're going to go look in the trailer and for you Porsche fans out there, especially 911, you're gonna love what's in the trailer. And you Pontiac fans or muscle car fans, you're absolutely gonna love what's in the trailer. So the story I had is I talked to a man, he's up in Emporia, Kansas, he said, Dennis, I've watched your videos lately. I understand you're chasing 64 to 73 long hood Porsches. I said, yes, sir, I am. He goes, would you be interested in an engine? Absolutely, what's the deal? He said, well, in 1975, I was gonna build an absolutely killer dune buggy. He said, so I went and bought the best motor I could find. I said, well, what is it? He said, it's a 911 motor. So what year is it? He goes, I think it's a 66. He said, but it came out of a, it's complete, came out of a running car, it was expensive back then. So think about that. This is a 1975. This motor has been sitting for 45 years. He had no pictures of it. He said, I'm kind of a hoarder. I said, can I come up here and film that? He goes, absolutely. He goes, but it's going to take you guys a long time to even get to the motor. He goes, you just have to trust me. It's a complete six-cylinder Porsche, okay? So I sent Sean Pettiford out there, which thank you for Sean. He was on the Montana road when we saved the trucks and goes sometimes with us on difficult stuff. Or if I can't go and Alex can't go. So he went up there. He said it took him two hours of moving stuff to get to this motor. We'll show you a couple pictures of that. Then the next car we're going to look at is a 71 GTO out of California. So people lived in California. They moved to Kansas with the car, put it in their garage in 1992, drove it in there, never drove it again. So a 71 GTO. Let's go look at it. Check the numbers on both of these and see what we got. They're still in the trailer. Morning, Alex. Did you peek? Nope, just unlocked uh, it. Okay. So Sean said he got stuck in a blizzard. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He sent me some pictures. So Sean got stuck in a blizzard bringing these things back from Missouri. He said he got super lucky. Came all the way down into Oklahoma City following a plow. So that was the only way he made it this far. So what the guy told me was, he said he thinks the motor's a 66, 911 motor. Okay. It's supposed to be complete. I, I tell you what, I'm crazy excited to see this engine and the GTO. Whoa. Okay, so we know it's an early motor because you got the, the one carburetor, it's a three barrel, yep. which you've built some of those. Now, so when we come in here, and we've shown this on camera several times, but it's hard for you guys to see because the motor's in the car. This one's out of the car. So in the front of the motor, you got the generator stand, which is right here. Uh-oh. Normally the numbers are right here, or on the side. So just open the trailer and you know our good buddy, Danny Pyatt. I remember him telling you and Josh, if you ever see a 911 motor, it's got some red. Oh yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. Look at that. Okay, that's a special motor. Now, this number stamped on the front, I'm not claiming to be the 911 expert of the entire world. The only time I've ever seen the motor stamped forward facing like that, it's a 68. So, but what I was hoping was this was this number would have started with a three zero, which would have been a 65, 66, 67 early motor. I am shocked. This is a 68 911 S motor. Oh, cool. This is, a, this is a holy grail yeah. engine. And he said it ran when it was pulled from the car. Look, it's totally complete. All the wires are on it. Fuel lines are on it. Absolutely incredible. So, in 1968, the 911 S's were not allowed in the U.S. because they would not pass emissions. So this was the absolute car to have in 68. They only made 2,900 of them, European delivery only. How this motor got here in 1975, I have no idea. That, I haven't said this on our Porsche stuff lately, is a holy grail engine. I cannot believe that's what it is. Shocked when I walked up and saw that, but I know that, I know that 408 series, and with the red, this is an S motor. What would be neat is find out what car it came out of. Now, 71 GTO. 
So let's look at the let's look on the trim tag and see what it says for color code and see if this is the right color. I hope it is. Okay, so you got color code D1, Adriatic Blue. Adriatic Blue. Trim code down here, 61. Blue interior. There was only 2019 400 four-speed GTOs ever built. That is a super rare number. To have one that's Adriatic Blue with blue is kind of like having a looser and blue Trans Am. This is the freaking bomb. Untouched. Original seats, no rips, no tears. 55,000 miles, original radios in it. Let's see what we got under the hood. Woo! Okay. The manual transmission cars, you know, out of the 2019 400 four speed cars, it was extremely rare to have AC on them. Not very many of them did. And bam, this thing's got AC. Power steering, power brakes, AC, rust free, California, killer color combination. Now, Here's one, a, a misconception a lot of people mess up on, and I bought a lot of Pontiacs over the years. People said, it's got the right code motor, but it's not matching numbers. Here's where they mess up. So what we're looking for, see right there that, that W code, Alex? Yep. So WK is, this is awesome, is, an actual, is a 1971 400 four-speed motor. But you see these other numbers with it? Okay, so those numbers right there, it says 0,400,184. Mm. People think that that should be the VIN number. That should match the VIN. The VIN number is the one that's all the way down at the bottom on the passenger side by the Tammy chain cover. So okay. you get to go down there and see if it yeah. matches. <laughs> now, I would think it'd be highly unlikely that it doesn't match because you've got a WK, which is a 71 400 four-speed only motor, but you know where that, mo that number is down there, right? Yeah. You mind getting down there and see how we did? Okay, so the last digits of this, Alex, of the VIN on this is, a, is 131.084, okay. okay? And we also know that this ash is for sure a GTO because the first digits of the VIN are 242.37. So we're looking for 131.084 should be down there. Let me get your, I'll get you a rag. You awake, Alex? Oh, yeah. after, we, after we figure out if we got a matching number of car or not, there's supposed to be some really cool stuff in the trunk that we'll look at. Right. Doesn't look like this motor's ever been out. 55,000 mile car and it's a little dirty down there. So it's taking a minute or two for Alex to see if we can see the number. Yeah, pull it, pull it a little tighter right there. It's there, we're just too much paint. Okay, well, we'll update you on that. We're gonna get in the shop and clean all the paint off and see what it is. If you look inside, you'll see this a four speed car, original radio still in it, seats are beautiful. Now, I want you to see what's in the trunk, Alex. I am confident it's the original motor. So the prior owner said that his dream was a 455 four-speed car. This is a 400 four-speed car. He's only made 400 of those. So what he was going to do is he was going to clone it to a 455 car. In order to do that, you needed a Ram Air setup. So There'll be somebody out there in the Pontiac world that will just absolutely love that. Grab that air cleaner on top. I believe it's NOS. So look at that, an NOS, which means new old stock, 455 Ram air setup with the plate for the hood. Now we're not gonna put that on these cars, it's not correct, but if somebody out there's got a 455 four-speed GTO and needs that, wow, is that a neat piece. So there you have it, a Holy Grail Porsche motor and a Adriatic Blue on Blue 4-speed 4 400 power steering, power brake, AC GTO, one of 2019 built. I think that was a good run, sir. Wish we could have filmed it, but here's what we got. Stay tuned, please like, tag, share, and follow. And again, if you got some spare time, you want to see everything organized, all 125 or 30 seconds in a row, go to YouTube. Have a great day. Zach and Kelsey just told me they didn't get enough content, which I understand. I guess we rushed it inside the trailer. We thought it was cool in the trailer. So we pulled the motor out of the trailer and the GTO out of the trailer. We cleaned this motor off real quick. It is a 68 911S motor, as we said earlier. It does have the correct 40 IDA series Weber carburetors. The engine number is 408-0018.
So there were around 1,270 68 911 S Porsche Coupes built. This engine is out of one of them. If you have the Cardex that has this engine number on it and you send it to me, I'll send you 600 bucks. Yep, $600 because I want to know what car this goes in. Now let's see what's going on with the GTO and see if we can find that number on the front of that motor. Well, please tell me it's there. Uh, it's not in the spot you said. I've been trying to Google it. I, I can't see it. That's normally where it is. So you, we saw it was a WK motor. Yeah. So I bet you in case of beer, that number's there. It looks like you cleaned it pretty good. All right then. Case okay. of beer. Done. The chances of this motor not being correct is very slim because, like I said, there's only 2,011 of these built. You're cleaning it in the right spot, but I've been around this enough to know, and seemingly on some of the Super Duty motors I've seen, the numbers aren't always in the same spot. Ha! I think you owe me a case of beer, sir. Show me. Okay. Normally, it is where you're looking in that area. Creep up to the left. Look under the yep. lower radiator hose. Yep. Untouched. Now, I can't tell if it's right, but it should be the last six digits of the VIN, so let's scrub that off and see. For this number not to be on this motor, it would admit that somebody would have had to find a WK 400 four-speed motor out of a 71. It's possible, super unlikely. That's actually more than five six of the VIN, but I believe that is correct, because I remember 131.084 that's definitely the right number matching number awesome so what a great find now you said you were gonna take the valve covers off and see if the valves were stuck and stuff did you have time to do that i did so you want to bet me another case of beer see if i can get it running today ah uh, it'd be pretty quick how long has it been in here more than two hours something like that sure i'll bet you case of beer doesn't run All right. <laughs> that would be very <laughs> unlikely uh-oh i see a new fuel filter down here well, Lower it down, <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> so again, the story was this car was driven into the garage in 1992. So 28 years has been sitting. Mm -hmm. So what Alex normally does, explain what you normally do when we have one's been sitting that long, the first thing we do. If the car's been sitting that long, I like to take the valve covers off, hit the valves a little bit, see if they're stuck or not. A lot of the times they'll un unseat themselves and just as soon as you fire the motor up, it'll run perfect. But we've had a couple motors where the valves would stick, you try to crank it over, and then the push rods just break. So from now on, we always take the valve covers off, make sure they're unstuck. And take all the spark plugs out too before yep. we try to roll it over the first time, all of them. Yep, correct. And if it rolls over easy, then you try to fire it up. If it rolls over hard, you be careful with it. Yep. Yep. Well, normally if they're just barely turning over, We'll fill them up with marble mystery oil or coral or something like that. Let them sit for a night or two, roll them by hand. So I'm assuming this one turned over okay. Yep, it did. You ready? Well, the door buzzer works. <laughs> That's a good sign. If it runs, I'll pay you a case of beer. Wow. How long did you work on this car today? Seriously. Not that long. More than two hours? No. Tack working? Yep, tack, oil pressure, fuel Oil gauge. pressure's good? Yep. Zach, get in here and hit the gauges while you still got it running. So I was, I'm assuming the tank was clean because we almost always put new gas tanks in these things. Yep, so I, I took a look inside. No rust, no fuel either, so that helped a lot. Oh, he must have drained it then. Yeah. Well, that was impressive. Tax working, good oil pressure. So maybe we'll drive this thing soon. Yeah, just do the brakes. Uh, be good. Let's hit the NOS parts over in the trunk. They're over here. Yes, set them on the uh, paint rack over there. So. This is the pan that goes on the bottom of a hood for a 455 HO car. All right. And this looks like the factory, if you turn that, so they can see it, an NOS air cleaner for that. Then you had, see these two spots right here? You mm -hmm. had the foam that connected these two here when you shut the hood to it. 
and that was right. your Ram Air. So this is your Ram Air pan, Ram Air air cleaner for 455 HO. There was only like 400 of those cars built. Cool. So if somebody needs that, I think what the plan was on this is he was gonna make it look like a 455 HO car, which yeah. is why I put the wing on the back. So I don't think the wing's correct. Um, I have to get the PHS, but what's odd is, if he added that wing, he changed the trunk hinges and the springs because it wouldn't stay up and that oh, one stays yeah. up. So that's pretty cool. Well, all right, that's outstanding. Cool. I would have bet you two cases of beer it didn't run. <laughs> I'm so happy it runs, I can't even see straight. What else do we have in here? Got some books. Factory 71 service manual. That's awesome. Chilton's manual. Paint code, super cool. What's this? Wow, that's neat. Order a book for Pontiac that year where you can pick all your vinyl tops, that's interior cool. colors, color codes, paint codes, carpet. So this is what you would have looked at when you sat down at your dealer to, to order your car. That's really cool. GMC dealer advertising and merchandising planner for 71 Pontiac. Here's all the color codes and tiers and everything. Wow, so he talked his dealer into giving yeah. all this paperwork. That is really neat. Again, this is Adriatic blue with what I would call medium blue interior, four speed car, power steering, power brakes, AC, and it runs. Good job, sir. Thank you. Now, Blazer update. <laughs> Yeah. Bam. So evidently we committed a cardinal sin. I am so sorry to all the square body guys out there and all the C10 guys. The grill that was in it, to our defense, was in it when we got it. It was evidently was wrong. We got the right grill and the right bow tie. And Zach committed a semi-cardinal sin. He didn't show enough B-roll on this incredible K5 Blazer. So enjoy the B-roll. Enjoy the bow tie, which evidently is a holy grail cherished thing to Chevrolet guys, yep. which I know it is. It won't happen again. I'm sorry. Please like, tag, share, and follow, and enjoy the beautiful B-roll on this cream puffer.